a good chance of it being a snowy grouper, a tile fish, Queens. queen, or a uh, barrel. Dude, this is exciting. <laughs> the mystery of knowing what it is. Yeah. You told me, hey, I got a friend that is doing this deep dropping. I was like, anytime that you can cross off a species off your off your list and catch something that you've never caught, I mean, that's going to be a great day. That's the coolest part about this, not knowing what's there. I know, absolutely. Look at this oh, guy. Yes. Oh, wow. oh, cool. yes, that is the coolest looking fish I've ever seen. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. You know, every now and then we get to go and do something different, and you told me, hey, I got a friend that is doing this deep dropping. You know, would you be interested in doing that? And I, I was like, well, yeah, sure. I mean, anytime that you can cross off a species off your, off your list, and go out and catch something that you've never caught. I mean, that's gonna be a great day. So I was pretty excited about it. Well, my friend Dave Jones, I've gotten to know him through different things, and he's always telling me all these you know, stories and showing me pictures of all these crazy fish that he catches, these queen snapper and, and barrel fish and, and all these different things. I didn't really know what a barrel fish was. Right. Um, and it sounds you know, like he was really dialed in. He's bringing them in, people are eating them, and he's, you know, I asked him, I said, hey man, you know, would, you, would you go out and show us that one day? And when's the fishing supposed mm -hmm. to be good for this? What yep. time of year? And he said, anytime, whenever the weather's good. Yep. It was interesting to me. I said, what do we need? He said, I'll bring my electric reel and um, a couple boxes of squid, that's all we need. I'm like, huh, all right, that sounds simple. As compared to these big elaborate offshore rigs right. and different things we've done. And what's the theory? Why would you have four hooks instead of just one? Um, I like to get a lot of scent down there. The more squid you can get down there, the better as far as getting the scent out there, letting them know you're there because of the current going. Sometimes it takes a couple drops to really get the fish to know you're there. And once they start smelling it down current from you, they'll start coming together. Right. A lot of times the first couple drops might be a little slow, but after that, all of a sudden they'll just start biting because they're starting to group up on you. Okay. And, and the, uh, I guess part of it is it takes so long to get down there, you don't want to get one bite and miss them exactly. and lose it. So now you got four bait, four opportunities yep. instead of one. You got a good chance of hooking uh, multiples, and at the same time, if you miss one or two, you still got baits on the other two. So, so this hopefully. is the That's lead. gonna go right to our lead, and then we're gonna go straight to our hooks on these rigs here. Hmm. That's cool. And so because it's so deep, we're gonna use electrics. Yes, sir. Some or all. And if you have a lot of energy, we're going to uh, take some Tom likes to work. Well, yeah. Tell him he I, can't crank it. It's I do, too hard. I, I do <laughs> like to work, but I also appreciate technology. We got a few rods ready for dolphin and other things in case we saw them out there. But it was a very simple setup. You brought this one electric reel, um, and um, and we, we rolled. Nice, calm day. We were able to leave the dock there at Hawks Cay and, and roll out there for about 15-mile boat rod. And um, he has these numbers that he punched in. And we get out there and you know start approaching the spot. And, and just, uh, you know, to me, this is very foreign. We were fishing anywhere from, I think, 600 to 800 feet of water. And, uh, you know, at that point, I'd, I'd never even really look at my bottom machine. And a lot of people don't realize you, it doesn't have to be a real jagged, rough, ledgy stuff like you're fishing groupers on the uh, edge of the reef. Yeah. Here, any kind of slow roll or anything that can hold bait or let them get out of the current. There's a lot of Gulf Stream current here. When you catch fish out here, what's in their belly? Uh, sometimes like a black jelly stuff. It's kind of like, the, I heard that it's a worm, some kind of worm huh. that they feed on that or squid usually. Really? So there, there are? And sometimes some there. kind of bottom fish sometimes. We'll get about 150 yards. That'll give us time when we drop the baits with this lead to, uh, to make it to our, down to our spot. Because we want to drift it with the current. This Gulf Stream might be doing anywhere from one knot to uh, three knots. But you can see that bottom, that's what they like, and that's where we're gonna do most of our dropping right here. All right, we're gonna uh, get rigged up here and get ready. You're basically putting six hooks, five or six hooks on a, uh, a leader there. So he had about a 10-foot leader, and he had hooks spaced about a foot or two apart. Um, very simple setup there, just, just multiple hooks. And on each one of those hooks, he put a squid or two squids on there, just this frozen box of squid, pretty simple, just hook it on. And then he had, um, then he had a big weight up above that, a big, um, heavy lead. I think it was like a five-pound lead or something like that. Big, big heavy lead, 
And uh, once you get that in the water, put it down and start dropping. Mm -hmm. About 600 some feet of water, just down, 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 down. And I'm thinking to myself, what is down there? Yeah. Hey, so this is actually accurate feet. I'm at 175. Um, it's meters. Meters? Yeah. Is that Two. it right there? Yeah, that's the bottom. So we'll lock the uh, bottom black. There you go. So when we went sword fishing, the bite was like boom. And then it just kind of right. went like that. This what is gonna what be, are we going to look for here? This is going to be more of the tap, tap, tap. You'll see the, uh, the tip of the rod. Okay. And sometimes the bigger fish, it will bend on over, like the sword fishing. But yeah. There's a bite. Ooh. There's a bite. Ooh. Start reeling. Go ahead. The, Go ahead and try it. Barely Reel a little faster. Keep reeling faster. All right, stop. There he is. Get him. Reel. You got him. Nice. Nice. Put a fish on? Oh, yeah. Fish on. <laughs> nice one, too. Yeah, good chance of it being a snowy grouper, a tile fish. Queen. Queen or a uh, barrel. Dude, this is exciting. <laughs> the mystery of knowing what it is. Yeah. Look at this oh, guy. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Yes, that is the coolest looking fish I've ever seen. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K, the only key you'll need. By Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Vicious, get vicious. And by Power Pole and Buff. This whole deal, you know, it's so different than anything that we normally do. I mean, first of all, most of what we catch, we see before we, we throw to it. And beyond that, we can probably step off the boat and hit the bottom pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. This is a whole different deal. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of controversy about, you know, electric reels and stuff like that. But in this, in this situation, I want to catch the fish, right? I want to catch one of these fish. I've never even seen one before. So, you know, I'm along for the ride. You know, he's, he's fishes with an electric reel, great. I don't care, whatever. I want to see what, what we're going to catch. I like, I like any kind of fishing where it's, it's a total mystery and there's a, there's a bunch of things to be caught. This would seem to be a fun, this would, this would be fun on a yeah, day like today ahead. with uh, kids. Yes, oh, my sure. boys would love Oh, they would love Because they just never know. Yeah. Guessing, dude. Then you might catch a sea monster. You never know. Well, I, can, away. I can really feel him kicking. Oh yeah, feels that pressure. And then you're gonna slide the butt up just a hair and turn the whole color. To it. Yeah, there we see he is. Fish. See a couple Two. of them. Two, at least. Yeah. It's like a couple tiles. Oh boy. I want to see that oh, thing. You got a tile. Fish. Wow. I see that guy. tile fish. All right. Now what am I doing? Swinging it. Yeah. There's your, uh, your first tile. That is huh. awesome. Now, how many tiles? Um, what's the uh, limit on tile fit? Oh, I'm not even sure. I believe it's two per person. Uh -huh. There, here's your first tile fish. That's cool, mm -hmm. man. Oh! I almost jumped out. There's your last tile fish. <laughs> it's a pretty fish, though. Yes. They are very good eating. These are a little on the small size, but they're still great eating fish. That's and, like um, a nice yellowtail or something. Yeah, you can feel even the coolness if you feel yeah, them I did from feel that, that cold water from the deep water. I did feel that. He is still. If you guys want to keep these to eat, well, you show me, guys. should we? Yeah, we'll keep these. Okay. I want to eat one. Yeah, I want to try plays. one. First time we've ever uh, caught one. The tile fish was the first one that we caught. Yep. And uh, it seems like an awful lot of tackle to use for a, for a small fish, but the tile fish can get bigger. But you know, the whole electric reel thing is not designed to really fight the fish. It's designed to get the bait up and down. I mean, it is a lot, long way down there. You know, it takes it's several pretty minutes. Much you know, without that, 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 that's pretty much unfishable. I mean, I spent so many years, um, you know, offshore as a, as a maid or, or just fun fishing, mm -hmm. running over that exact area. Right. Basically the top five feet of the water is all we're looking at. Um, birds and floating debris and everything and and running over all these areas never even thinking what right. was on the bottom <laughs> and he's been looking at it a different way yes he does some of that top water fishing but but he spent enough time looking at these different you know bottom structures and things and actually dropping down and, and finding what's down there and to do that and to learn where these fish are and where they're not the electric reel is really the only way to do it got him on yeah oh yeah there you go that's a that's nice much better go all the way slow down a little slow down 
That's a nice one. He comes a lot oh, yeah. different. A little more, yeah, yeah. A little faster though. There you go. They're nice getting bigger. Fit. Oh yeah, that's what you want right yeah. there, guys. He he worked it. Oh yeah, he, rod oh. stuff. So you think that's a uh, a tie, a big tie? This is a barrel or a grouper, yeah. Mm. Barrel or a grouper? Oh yeah, for sure. Cool. Maybe that's another cool. new species. Oh yeah. Getting knocking a few off our list. He was kind of disappointed. He was expecting to catch bigger stuff, but I remember him saying something. He said sometimes these bigger fish, the um, snowy grouper and the barrel fish that he was really hoping to catch, sometimes it takes a little action. You know, right. action brings action. Hey, it's in like any other kind of fishing. Action brings action. That's and so we he, went, he went back around for another pass and, and, and get a bite in it. I could definitely tell this is a bigger fish. Pretty exciting. What's when your bet? What's your bet? Barrel fish is what I would say. Barrel fish? Yeah. I wouldn't even recognize it, would you? I don't have any idea. I mean, I mean, could, could, could you I pick a barrel fish out of a lineup? I think you, yeah, yeah, I think so. But I, I think that you have to drop more than three times to become an expert. <laughs> <laughs> Should be seeing it any second. There he is. Oh yeah, I'm big, say big tile, big barrel or a snowy. Snowy, barrel or a snowy. It's a lot of different fish there. Snowy. Nice. Wow, nice. grouper. Nice. That's a new one. <laughs> that is cool. That's a new one. That is Good cool. That. I have never seen <laughs> one of those before. Wow. Oh, nice. nice group one, man. Nice, Rich. Good. First, another one. Another first. Look at the chompers. I mean, that's spots on them too. What a beautiful fish. That's why they call them the snowy, the big white spots on them. Beautiful fish. Well, nice. So these would get to how big? Those will get up to about 30 pounds or 40 pounds sometimes. 30, 40 pounds. That's a perfect eating fish right one. there. Okay, we're taking him home. Yeah! Grouper for dinner. K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Lorance, find, navigate, dominate. Quantum Rods and Reels, fishing at a quantum level. By Loadmaster and Costa. You get to go fishing with a lot of different people doing what we do and you know occasionally you come across a guy that you just like right away and dave i liked his manner i liked his demeanor i liked his confidence and uh just super nice guy and he just has this confidence this quiet confidence that's what it is it's not like a being cocky or anything like that it's a quiet confidence where dave's you're just done, around dave's a guy done like a dave. lot of different things dave dave it's interesting he, he grew up commercial fishing yeah um so he's actually you know, done some of this bottom fishing, commercial fishing, basically getting paid. If he caught a fish, he made money. If he right. didn't, he didn't. So he got very um, dialed in on, on efficiency and, and learning how to bottom fish out in the deep water. And then he's also been a charter captain on some of the best boats in, right. the, in the world. Right. Um, he's seen some things that, you know, just are really amazing. You can tell that this guy's the real deal. He's done a lot of things, you know, and he knew exactly what he was looking for. We had the right day and he was like, yeah, you know, we're gonna drop. I'm gonna put you in the right place. And if everything goes right, we're gonna catch what we're after. What, I mean, how, how big of a fish does he have on, do you think? This is probably a 30 pound fish, maybe more. 80 meters, we're gonna find out. That's the coolest part about this, not knowing what's there. I know, oh, absolutely. Oh, this is a big fish, guys. Oh, look at that. It was all in the way oh. I flipped the switch. <laughs> See how I did that? Just don't go any faster, we don't wanna rip them off. That, uh, that drag set real good right now, so everything's looking real good. The biggest thing with these big fish is you don't want to put too much pressure on them. It's like any fish, you can always rip the hook out or... Uh, yeah, this is a different deal here. here. And then the question is, what is it? You know, this yeah. is, it takes a while. You know, you, you're bringing this fish up and you know, you're seeing the bend in the rod and you're, you're thinking, okay, this is a decent fish, what is it? He's, he, and, and 
he had an incredible ability to call the shot. Yeah. Just by the way it was fighting. And he's like, you know what? That's a barrel. That's a barrel right there. And so the barrel fish was a fish that I've never seen before. I was very curious about this fish and I wanted to catch one. What are you thinking? I think it's a big barrel. Ooh, he's fighting. Yeah, big barrel, guys. Big barrel, first time. Now when it quits reeling, you want to start reeling. Go and hand crank, yep. Look at this barrel, guys, beautiful. First time for a barrel fish, look at that guy. Turn the rod to us, and then we're gonna get some help leadering him up here. Look at this oh, guy, yes. Wow, beautiful. That's cool. Yes, that is the coolest looking fish I've ever seen. Look at that. God, I gotta hold oh, that thing. Oh, this is a beauty, <laughs> man. <laughs> look at that. That is awesome. Look at that. Look at this Man, size. Man, I'll over. tell you what. I don't know. I've, saw, I've seen these guys before in pictures and stuff, but I didn't know if I was ever going to catch one in my entire life. Guys, he actually ate two hooks there. Yeah, he did. Sure did. And so you know, before you get slime, is one of the slimiest fish this there one is. is. But I one of the care. best eating fish there is. Grandma. And the craziest thing of any fish I've ever caught was the amount of slime that that fish produced. As I'm looking at it, I can see this fish pumping slime between the scales. You know, it was just pumping the slime out, which is obviously some sort of defensive mechanism that that fish has, but it tried it on me. I wasn't letting the thing go, though. <laughs> that thing, you're right, man. He is like slimy thing, look, look at light. his head. A what a beautiful bull mouth. fish, though, huh? So what's his main deal, squid? Most diet supposedly is squid, and, and like I said, there's some worm, some, some kind of worm that lives on the bottom. He is dense. So what a special fish to catch. You know, when I started fishing down here in the Florida Keys, we used entirely monofilament. And it was a big problem because you could catch one or two fish on it and it would get all twisted up. If your customer was reeling against the drag, the line would get all twisted. Then with the advent of braid, man, it revolutionized fishing. With zero stretch, smaller diameter, we had the ability to cast so much further than we could ever cast before. We could throw smaller baits further. We could catch bigger fish on lighter tackle. And it's gotten to the point to where I don't have monofilament on a single one of my reels. So what I'm constantly in search of is a braid that is perfect. The braids would always have a, a little bit of problem. Maybe they were too soft or, or they would cast well for a while, but then they would, would kind of lose that characteristic and, and then it would come off in a big wind knot. Well, part of that is how you spool the reel. Now, I like to spool the reel just like this. Now, this is a little, this is right on the edge of being too much line on the reel for my taste. But if you bring it down just a little bit, you're gonna minimize tangles throughout the day. But if you have a good braid, typically you're not getting a lot of tangles. Now the braid that I have, I've tried everything out there on the market, but the one that I've come up to, to like the very best is this Vicious Braid. And the Vicious Braid is, is fantastic. Here, here's a good test for you. When this stuff comes right off the spool, see this one has just enough, just enough stiffness that it's gonna stand out and it's gonna eliminate a lot of the tangles that you're gonna get when it comes off the line. So I found that the Vicious is, is a fantastic braid. It does everything I want. They make it in spools from uh, 10 pound to 100 pound and uh, I'm spooling up with Vicious on everything I've got now. Check it out and check out all of our full length shows step-by-step -step instructions on how to tie knots and rig rigs and catch more fish at saltwaterexperience.com. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by True Flies, life off the chart. By Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by Motor Guide and Fraybill. For full length shows, step by step instruction, and stuff you've never seen on TV, go to saltwaterexperience.com.
What a special fishery though right here. A lot of people, this is one of the hardest fish to locate, target, and catch here. Yeah, and, uh, well you've, you've done all three and so seemingly seemingly effortlessly. So we're blessed. I appreciate to you to uh, bringing us out here, man. This is there he is right there. Oh, cool! Look at him. Yep. It's Big a very fish. Special Dude, he's deal. getting mad now. Beautiful fish, guys. Six meters. Oh, I see him. Look at him. Big fish. Now hand crank. Now turn your rod. Remember. Oh, look at that. Another big yeah. one. Goodness you gracious. Grab him? You can thumb got lip them if you want. You can. Sure. Yeah, the I'll take that. Snatch. Go ahead and let you grab him. Just watch the hook there. The gills. Right in the lip, he won't hurt you at all. In the lip? Yep, he won't hurt you at all. It's a big permit. There you go. It like is a like a big, big permit. permit. Afraid of those hooks. <laughs> look at the size of that thing. All right. That's you, buddy. Woo! Now look, this is what I noticed on mine. He, as soon as Dave said, that is the slimiest fish. <laughs> look, he does, look, you can see the slime oozing out of him. Look yeah. at that. Look, you can see yep. it. Look, dude. Isn't look, that it's coming, crazy? it's oozing out of him like, like, <laughs> It must be a defensive, a defensive mechanism. But here, in by the time I take a picture of you with him, he's gonna be. Uh, he's gonna have you covered with slime. Woo! Cool. But you can really see that. <laughs> yeah, it's I gotta amazing. get a picture with you too. Yeah, me too. Beautiful fish. Hey. That's right. three fish already. We've only been out here for a few minutes, and that's three fish already All that right. I've never see, even seen job, before. Rich. Yeah, man. Thank you. Outstanding. Mm. Outstanding. All right. Barrel fish for dinner. Well, it's, tile, it's not red, right? but it's a good tile fish. It's going to be dinner. Good eating. I'll tell you what, that was one heck of a day, man. We got to catch three different species we never caught before. And from what you're telling us, we're going to have a pretty awesome dinner. Great dinner. <laughs>